welcome back to my channel still on the love compass 2024 event celebrating valentine's day in the church um, it was a wonderful event it was a beautiful gathering of young people in the church wanting to know about love so in this video today there will be a lot of question and answer session the young people are going to be asking a lot of questions so if you have not subscribed to my channel what exactly are you waiting for please hit the subscription button and um, leave a comment share this video and enjoy this well, video question that um there are people who tell you oh my brother or my sister got married to someone only for me to realize that this lady cannot conceive or she doesn't have a womb so is it justifiable for for them to have a taste you know, that is to go to sexual activity just because you want to prove a point before you get married. I believe maybe the youth didn't want to ask this question, so I'm asking it deliberately. Decide to test, to know if the person is going to get pregnant. And God, in his infinite mercy, after marrying, Maybe that child that was gotten out of bed or died, and there is no more pregnancy, what will you do? So, now, marriage is faith. Life itself is faith. Marriage is risky. You go in, you go in taking a risk because you don't know the person. Like my brother said, you're getting married to somebody. The person will change three years from now. Now, when you're getting married to this person, have the mentality that I'm getting married to different people in one person. That's the truth. After shy bed, I'm sure I've changed, even if you won't say it. Me, I know. I know that I have changed. There are certain things that get me angry before I will overlook. So if he say he was he's married to that slim girl, I'm sure by now we must have divorced because I'm no longer that slim girl. So now, what am I trying to say? You are going into marriage with faith. Don't test. Don't try to test. Because even if you test and by eventually the shy dies, what will happen after you are married and there's no shy again? Saying, how can we feel comfortable enough to speak to our parents that we're getting getting into a relationship, or maybe we see someone and we like them, if we believe that our parents are strict and maybe we don't have a close relationship? I, with I them. believe that when you have such hard parents, talk to them. My father was very hard. God, when I when I think about him, so sometimes I see just scared. I'm not one longer with him, but I still get scared. Because he was hard with us. But when it was time for me to get married, I just went to meet him and said, Sir, I'm ready to get married. He said, Are you sure? He said, Yes. Can you feed your wife? He said, Yes. Can you take care of your children? He said, Yes. Okay. But the most important thing is asking the Holy Spirit to help you. Yes. The Holy Spirit actually helped me. The Holy Spirit helped me to toast my wife. <laughs> I really don't know what it means to so talk to my wife. I was not able to talk to her with wonderful, corny words. I just told her that I like you, I want to get married. <laughs> and I, that was all. And, and that was no sweet words. It does not work with everybody, though, but the Holy Spirit actually did. But it's just like evangelism. When you preach to someone, you tell the person that God loves you. And the person said, oh, thank you very much. He goes home and he's about to sleep and the Holy Spirit comes and says, you remember what that brother said? That was exactly what happened. So, if you had a hard parents, a hard father, a hard mother, you can't really talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please help me. Just let me talk to you. If you are really serious, and that is the will of God for all. See, 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 many are the devices of the heart of a man, but the will of God stands. You know, if it's the will of God, Holy Spirit will help you. Thank you very much. What is the right age for a relationship? So what's the age that you believe that is the right time for them to start looking into being in a relationship? The age is a particular age, is 20, is it 21, whatever. Um, really and truly, it's about you being ready because somebody that is 25 or even 30 is probably not ready. So it's it's tricky to to put like a stamped age, like you know, set in stone. At this age, you should you should start considering courtship or relationship. No, I think it's it's us being honest with ourselves to see how ready we are. Obviously, um, our brother has also mentioned that you know when he was his father said, "Can you feed yourself? Can you feed your wife? Can you you know?" So if you are 35 and you can't do all those things, does that mean you should get married? I don't think so. You know, so it's actually ticking those boxes. The purpose 
the purpose box, the prayer box, you know, everything that we have heard today, you are supposed to tick those boxes before you consider marriage or you know courtship. So I don't I don't think we should be fixed, like fix our mind on an age so that way you don't put yourself under pressure and say, Oh my god, I'm 25 now and I'm not in courtship. You know, you start putting yourself under unnecessary um pressure. So just focus on the important things, you know, and leave age out leave age out of it really. Okay. One of the things yeah. that stood out for me and I'm encouraging us with is you have to get settled before you settle down. You don't get married to be settled. Do you understand? You don't get married. You don't, you know, people say, Oh, let me marry and settle. No, you settle to be married, you know. So you have to first deal with your ability to not be in it because God doesn't like anything that exalts His name. If you are exalting marriage above him, he might not give you that spouse. He will wait until you come to the point, because God is not in a hurry, and his time is the best. It doesn't matter your age, that's your own headache. When he's blessing you, he blesses you completely. So, that, so that's not a problem for him. So when, when you are, when you are, when you are um, anxious, you need to kill that anxiety, that desperation. All those things must die. If you take it to marriage, you will make a wreck before you even start. So now, what I did was, I got busy with God's word. So I was involved in everything in church, you know, um, until I, I no longer think of getting married. Then, I started talking to her. The end was history. The justification for living together with someone is that you get to know them and see sides of them that you might not discover, that you might discover mid-marriage. So what happens in a scenario where you've gone through your courtship and you're married and then you discover some traits that you didn't see at the beginning and it's a massive throw off for you, like maybe, like maybe bad temper, uh, a funny one would be um, snoring, you know, you so, like, just but, but on the maybe snoring might not be enough to, to want to break off on the marriage, or like someone that has a bad temper, really hot, and just always going off. And then discover that during courtship, and how yeah, that, that's right. something people change very, very often. You know, if I give you one million today, you change. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you change. When a lady, when a, when a lady is single and she gets pregnant, she changes too. You know, so people are going to change consistently. So that principle of saying you want to stay with someone so you observe the person in three years, the person will change. Okay, so I think it's important to understand. That's why we say let the foundation be Christ. So whether they change or not, you know, the base is always going to be there. Right? So God not, the Holy Spirit is your best friend, like, and especially that's why we always go back to the foundation. Of you must marry a Christian because you cannot be unequal in you. Like my sister said that. There's something she cannot go with an unbeliever to in prayer. It depends on an unbeliever. How would the Holy Spirit tell him to, you know, rearrange that thing? So really and truly, the Holy Spirit will help you because he's there to actually help you. To say, okay, he will nudge that person and say, okay, you don't, you don't even need to talk again. Just leave it. And he will nudge that person and say, okay, you need to. And the person will, you know, just, just do what they have to do. So the Holy Spirit will always help you. All right, all right. So knowing God is so very, very important. So first one is, is self-love. The um, second one is knowing God for yourself and hearing Him speak to you. Okay, you definitely need to know that. You definitely need to know that. Okay. The third one is emotional stability. At the end, you're the one that will benefit, and God will have the glory. Okay, and everyone will be happy. Eventually, like I always say, if you face a situation, zoom out and think, what is the big picture? The big picture is you want to be happy in life. Okay? You want to be happy in life. You want to look at yourself five, ten years back and say, ah, I made a good decision. And if you want that, be open and honest. Okay? God will help us in Jesus' name.